Hi, my name is Pino, and I'm here to talk to you about the Corpus Generator. So this is a full stack Flask app, which interfaces with the Spotify API to collect data on songs based on user specified filters. This is helpful for generating a large body of works to be used in Corpus studies by musicologists, where the research is done by collecting and analyzing hundreds or thousands of songs. Uh, there are a lot of problems that make reliable corpus building very difficult and very time consuming for researchers. So this tool will hopefully solve many of those problems. Uh, the first area is the get artists area. And what we can do here is specify a genre. We'll say pop, specify a level of popularity. So we'll say 80 and specify a maximum amount and let's say 200. So what this is going to give us is a list of the first 200 artists that Spotify wants to return that are above 80% popularity level. And the way that they determine this exactly is kind of under the hood and a little bit of a secret, but um, this is going to give us at least a fairly large list of people that we know we want to work with. So here we are, we've got, let's see we're still loading, but uh, it looks like we've got enough here. So we're gonna head over now to the get tracks. Oh, did we get any more? Nope, they were all below 80. So if we go to get tracks now, we could either use that list that was just generated for us. And in fact, I'll show you again, uh, just so you can see that it's gonna give us this list here that has a little bit of information and also this horribly styled list of comma separated names because in get tracks what we need is a list of comma separated names now if I did all of these artists it would be quite a long list and take quite a long time so I'm just going to use myself as an example here and what we can do with get tracks is first we're just going to see it's going to return every track that has my name on it on Spotify and you see we're coming up with a list of songs here and each one has a collection of information about it, uh, title, artist, and then all of these uh, categories, all these metrics that Spotify uses along with its unique ID um, and all this information that you might want. Now, what else we can do here is say we want only songs that are above a certain tempo. So we see here, this track is at 130, this track is at 72, and this track is at 114. So let's say we only want tracks that are above 120 beats per minute. We recompile, and you'll notice those first two that were above, or that were below 120 are now gone. Um, yeah, and we can combine multiple filters as well. So let's say this is above 120 and 0.26 liveness. This is above 120 and 0.09 liveness because this is a fully electronic piece. Let's say we need at least 10% liveness. And so we'll see that this piece is still will no longer be part of this list of information. All right, so that's get tracks and what I think is probably the most useful aspect of this whole project is our download CSV function. So oh, I meant to clear the filters here. I'm gonna get a decently large list of information. And so you see we've got all of these tracks now. And in order to really speed up the process of dealing with this information, we can download a CSV that has all of this already. If we quickly open it in here, you can see that it is just a regular comma separated values. Uh, you could see by color the columns, but to make it even easier to see, we're gonna open it up in Excel, or sorry, Google Sheets. And here we go. I'm just gonna import all that, don't care about the settings. And so here we go. If you wanted to sort this by, you know, loudness or by uh, mode being 
it's sort of a, a numerical representation of the mode of the key. This would be a numerical representation of the actual key signature. And then we have more usable numbers like energy, danceability, and such. But so you can see how this would work. I won't do it now, but we could gather, you know, thousands of tracks in a single click and then turn that into a CSV with one more click. And then we have all this information that we need um, to do some research with. And so the biggest thing that I learned while working on this project is um, about continuously rendering this data because as I was trying it with, let's say we try all three of these, get a bit of a larger data set. You see, it takes a while and then the first track starts coming in, but we're continuously rendering all of these tracks. And it takes a while because we're making all of these singular requests to Spotify for each track, because that's just the only way that API uh, allows you to interface with it. So originally, this was working on a regular REST framework where the front end would make a HTTP request to the back end, that would start sending messages to the API for Spotify, get some information back. And then once all of the information is ready, it re-renders this page with all of this information already on it. So the problem with that was that if you waited, let's say you added you know, Taylor Swift to this, you're getting hundreds upon hundreds of songs and it seems like it's not working because nothing's happening. Even though under the hood, it's making all these requests you're not getting any feedback until it's done. So I went in and kind of rewrote a, a good deal of this entire project to not use HTTP requests for things like that and instead to use uh, WebSockets. So we're still using HTTP for all the routing. So, you know, going between pages, Flask makes that very easy. But what happens here is instead of using an HTTP request, we're using socket messaging. And when I click compile, it sends a socket message to the back end, which then makes all of these AP, uh, API requests um, in the form of a generator function. So the generator function can then yield all of these results one by one. And as it yields a result, it sends a socket message back to the front end and a little bit of JavaScript receives that message and then renders it onto the page. So it doesn't really change the um, usability or like the actual effect of what this page does, but it does make it a little bit more user friendly in that you're not sitting there waiting and, and hoping you didn't hit an error. You can see this information come in live and it's just kind of, it's kind of nicer to know that it's doing something while you wait. So that is the corpus generator. Uh, hopefully this is of use to at least one person. Thank you very much for watching.